Hello, uh, Paul here with another Motors and News. In this week's show, EV fire protection, Stellantis going down the agency model, Copart getting too big, Continental brakes, US EV subsidies, and e fuels. <laughs> The big concern with EVs that we constantly hear about is the issue of a fire um, and the uh, the issue that when you, even when you put the fire out that it could reignite in hours, days or weeks. Well a company called Ecotrap have effectively come up with a portable collapsible bath for want of a better description. Uh, you can erect it and uh, around the car fill it with water uh, and then the car sits in that for a period of time to make sure that it doesn't reignite. It's produced out of reinforced uh, polyurethane fabric and is resistant to dangerous substances. So again, this is a situation where we're really only reacting to it on the hoof in that, yeah, it is a valid concern that people have when they speak about electric vehicles. And you would assume that these type of procedures were already in place and were already clearly laid out. But no, we're still developing ideas around how we're going to cope with these EVs in the event of a fire. And this is another one of those ideas. Stellantis, 14 brands, okay, 14 brands, all launches in Europe in 2026 and from 2026 on are going to be battery EV. So they're saying from, from 2026 on, there will be no internal combustion engines, new internal combustion engine vehicles launched by Stellantis. This week they gave they produced a press release and there's a lot of flurry language in this press release. Synergies optimizing distributor cost. Partners play an important role in being representatives for our brands in the field. But when you drill down and you look more closely, and when I was reading this, I was thinking, hold on a second, this looks to be that they're happy with the traditional dealer model. No, effectively when you drill down into this, what they're launching or what they're rolling out or what they're informing their dealers is that from, from now on, they're gonna to start to develop the agency model. So again, in the last three or four shows, this has come up, it's come up from Mercedes, it's come up from BMW, and now Stellantis, 14 brands effectively, the automaker effectively is taking control of the sale and the pricing. So there's massive, massive changes for the structure of the industry in terms of the relationship between the manufacturer of the car and the customer. Uh, the agency model has now been rolled out by Stellantis. It looks like everybody's going to go this way. The dealer's role is really going to be of delivery and service. So how that's going to evolve, how those facilities are going to evolve, what they are going to be like, they certainly don't need to be as elaborate as they have been for the last 10, 20, 30 years. Copart. Most everybody in the trade would be, in, be aware of Copart. Uh, really an, an American company that is on the American Stock Exchange. And in years ago, it started out in UK buying breakers yards. You know, and you say there's sort of breakers yards, scrapping cars, doesn't really fit with companies quoted on the American Stock Exchange. Well, yeah, that's what they are. And they've grown in prominence right the way through the UK. And they've also got two facilities in Ireland, one in Castle Dermot and one in Belfast. Well, uh, Lisbon, but in July they purchased a company called Hill Motors in Skylesmere Port, just north of Liverpool. The that company had a twenty-five acre site. The Competitions and Markets Authority have looked at this, and effectively they've said knocked it on the head. They've said no. Really, what they're saying is that Copart is getting too big. It controls too much of the salvage market, too much of the damaged car market in the UK. And it says that, 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 that this company, Hills Motors, was a close competitor of Copart 
and that there's loss of competition in the marketplace as a result of this merger. So they've knocked it on the head. Interestingly, the lady, the senior director of mergers at the Competitions and Markets Authority is a lady called Saoirse O'Carroll. So obviously some sort of an Irish link there. But again, showing you an area which you, you couldn't believe when you looked at breakers yards and scrap yards and the old, old format of them that this company's come in and it's bought them and bought them and bought them and bought them to the point where the competition's authority have said hold on a second you own too much of the salvage market you own too much of the used vehicle you own too much of the breaker because a lot of almost a large percentage of cars that go to breakers now come through copart now so yeah this company's been told to pull back and it's getting too big and too strong. When it comes to braking, the whole braking brake system thing uh, really has changed in, as a result of the electric vehicle and the retardation that takes place in the electric vehicle. The regen means you don't need as much brake. So Continental have come up with, have re taught the whole brake and have come up with a new brake uh, advanced development and they're calling it the green caliper much lower mass up to five kilos per brake is what they're speaking about 80 percent of your deacceleration needs no brake in a modern ev vehicle but when you really do need the brake the brake performance needs to be higher than a conventional brake because the weight of the vehicle is heavier due to the battery. The thermal loads are a lot less because you're not using it as much, uh, which is allowing you to make changes again. You can have more compact pads. The pad thickness is smaller because you're not wearing the pads very much. In fact, some of the problem with traditional braking systems that are kind of still being used on electric vehicles is that everything's rusting up and a, a seizing up so this is a new approach to how we, we will manage and maintain brakes on electric vehicles the brake caliper is much smaller so therefore the diameter of the disc can be greater however because the thermal loads are less on the disc the disc can be significantly thinner um, also with this brake caliper you've got active retraction so it is actively pulling the pads back in so you're not getting any residual torque resistance on the disc either. So lots of new innovations around the brake caliper, something that's remained pretty much the same for a very, very long time. But yet when you look at the requirements for braking on EV, you realize, yeah, the rethinking of the caliper is, is probably well overdue. Major issues with EU stroke America as far as subsidies for EVs are concerned. America is really, really active on the EV thing. They've got uh, the IRA, Inflation Reduction Act, is uh, financial assistance to any companies that are setting up in the EV sector in America. Norfolk is considering a new plant in America. And if it goes ahead with the plant, it would get 830 million in subsidies from the American government. That's four times more than it would get in Germany. Uh, and adding to this is the energy costs are much, much higher in Europe due to the war. Uh, those energy costs are not nearly as high in America. And the bosses at Volkswagen are saying EU needs to address this. They're saying that it's going to get to the point where it's not feasible to produce batteries in the EU. Um, so a very interesting situation here where that America is so attractive because of the offers it's making to manufacturers to go there and produce in that country is meaning that it's almost too good to refuse and we're going to look that we might lose some of our European manufacturing to America as a result of this. E-fuels. Uh, E-fuels probably the big thing on E-fuels is that F1, for example, is going to go with e-fuels in 2026. And the conversation in the industry is, is e-fuels the great white hope? Are e-fuels going to save the internal combustion engine? 
lower carbon e-fuels yeah sounds like a great idea sounds like it could be the solution well last week there was a conference in america the north american international propulsion conference and from that they're saying no no that ice engines will not be saved by e-fuels they're saying it is the same carbon footprint as an ev so there's no particular advantage to a nice engine running on e-fuels also there's issues it's taking three times the energy to produce e-fuel compared to gasoline stroke petrol and there's no large production plants and there's no plans for large production plants so again an interesting scenario here where we've got Audi Volkswagen Group joining F1 to pr promote e-fuels. Porsche saying that e-fuels are necessary. They're campaigning strongly for e-fuels. But yet no, when you look at the nuts and bolts of e-fuels, no, this conference is saying e-fuels are not the future. And with no production facilities, that really has been driven home. Now, I'm not sure whether they need to produce more production facilities to produce e-fuels for formula one or whether the facilities are there are sufficient but certainly i see e-fuels as possibly being used on race and rally areas going forward but not for the general public that's it for this week thanks for watching and if you could please like comment and subscribe and a big thank you out to george at soup classic motoring uh he's got a youtube channel it's amazing for the few subscribers that we have that haven't seen his channel, we're going to leave you the link for that. But we got uh, a lot of subscribers from his channel this week as a result of him featuring us and talking about us and make, putting the link up for us on his channel. He, uh, we're not quite at his level yet. We've got about 280 subscribers. He's got uh, 113,000 subscribers but what he does is amazing uh the videos the video production is incredible on his restoration work so for our subscribers that are not aware of it please go over there but thank you for the subscribers that's come from him we're very grateful thanks for that george